Hi guys, welcome to the lesson of partial differential equation. So discussion on the problem continues wave equation with homogeneous boundary conditions. Uh, we already discussed this topic and now we are going to start a uh, discussion on non-homogeneous wave equation with the non-homogeneous boundary conditions, time dependent and time independent boundaries, right? So the idea is uh, heat equation is given in this form and uh, heat source, uh, sorry, uh, wave equation. <clears throat> and here we can see that a source is given that is uh, represented by a function of X that is time independent source and boundary conditions are given, initial conditions are given. Therefore, we need to construct the solution for this problem by using method of separation of variables and maybe we, we may use some other methods for solving the problems right so therefore uh, here uxt is equals to wxt plus vx and from here we can see that u double t is equals to w double t that is c squared ux is equals to c squared wxx plus c squared v prime uh, v double prime of x. All right, so it's double prime. All right, so ut is equals to wt plus zero, then ut t is equals to wtt, therefore wtt is equals to c squared wxx plus c squared v double prime x. All right, so now we can uh, split this problem in this manner, WTT is equals to C squared WXX plus C squared V double prime X plus function of X. So the problem is split into two parts. One is the problem for WX comma T and the other part we have for this VX comma T. All right, so now we can solve these equations easily because this equation, we can see that the static equation is now homogeneous with homogeneous conditions so it's pretty easy to solve and here it's also second order uh, ordinary differential equation so this is easy to solve right so you can solve uh, for v of x and then whatever the function we have here it will be used in the uh, initial condition of this uh, static equation right so let's take an example Let's say that uh, an equation is given u double t plus uh, is equals to u double x plus sine three pi x over two, and the boundary conditions are homogeneous boundary conditions. So um, initial conditions are also zero. So it's a sim simplex problem. You can see just we need to work on the equation that is u x comma t is equals to w x comma t plus v x comma t, right? So now we can split this problem into two parts as we already discussed uh, here, WTT is equal to WXX and all the boundary conditions are homogeneous. And then for uh, V double prime X plus sine three pi X over two is equals to zero, right? So this is the second order ordinary differential equation. Boundary conditions are homogeneous. So V of zero is zero, V of two is also zero here for we are going to solve the ordinary differential equation first because we are going to use the function of x whatever we get the value in the initial condition here you can see that it's minus v of x right uh, because this is actually u of x comma zero minus v of x therefore u of x is already zero we know that given zero therefore it will be negative v of x so we will solve this ordinary differential equation by integrating it twice. So it's a second order equation and it's the function of X on the right hand side. We can integrate twice to get the solution. So here is the solution for the problem. And then we will apply the boundary conditions to get the function, <coughs> function of X, right? So here is the function V of X is equals to four over nine pi squared sine three pi X over two. Now, we are going to construct, uh, solve the problem that is a static problem, right? So now WTT is equals to WXX. 
And wx comma zero is equals to negative four over nine pi square sine three pi x over two because we said that w of x comma zero is equals to negative v of x, right? So this is negative v of x, and then w three x comma zero is zero. So we will solve this problem. We already know these are directly boundary conditions, so we know that the expansion for this uh, general solution will be a n sine and pi x over two times cosine and pi t over two and b n sine and pi x over two and uh, sine and pi t over two, right? So we'll apply the initial condition. First of all, we should use this condition because it's uh, simpler, it's equal to zero. Therefore, it will make b n is equals to zero. Here you can see that, right? So now we'll solve for a n, uh, therefore now, the condition wx comma zero is applied here so problem is a n sine and pi x over two is equals to minus four over nine pi square sine three pi x over two and we know by comparing comparing the coefficients uh, we can solve for a n therefore uh, here it is sine three pi x so for n is equals to three we can work out for the problem therefore we can only get a three so if we compare a three with this problem then we will get negative 4 over 9 pi squared so a3 is equals to negative 4 uh, over 9 pi squared and all other a n will be zero for all n uh, n not equals to 3 so the solution to this problem is wx comma t is equals to negative 4 over 9 pi squared sine 3 pi x over 2 and cosine 3 pi t over 2 and for all other n a n is equals to zero right so this is the idea to solve uh, these problems. Now we will, uh, uh, yes, uh, in fact, uh, the solution will be now, uh, the final solution is uh, by using the superposition principle because we, ha we have V of X as well in the solution and W X comma T. So we'll add the solutions and we'll get the final answer. And so u x comma t is equals to w x comma t plus uh, v of x, right? So now let's move to another example. Question is about time dependent boundary conditions. Given that u t t is equals to u x x plus two, the conditions you can see that uh, u zero comma t is zero but ux comma uh, ux one comma t is equals to t therefore these are non-homogeneous time dependent boundary conditions and ux comma zero is equals to x utx comma zero is equals to zero therefore the solution is again the function the sum of two functions that is w of x t plus v of x t here we can see that and then v of x t is uh, equals to one over l times x b of t minus l minus x into a of t. So by using this simple equation, we can form the solution v x t. Therefore, b t is uh, equals to t. a t is equals to zero. Here b t is equals to t. And a t is equals to zero. Therefore, we'll apply here and you'll get this solution v, x, v of x t is equals to x t right now for w t t minus w x x we can see that we can say that it's equals to the u t t minus u x x minus v t t minus v x x right so v t t will be equals to zero from here and v x x will be zero uh, equals to zero from here we can calculate both v t t and v x x and u t t minus u x x is equals to two. So then again, we will get the equation static as w t t minus w x x is equals to two. The boundary conditions are now homogeneous. And uh, uh, yes, uh, the initial conditions are uh, w x comma zero is equals to x minus v x comma zero. So this is here, yes. So it's ux comma zero minus vx comma zero. So it will be x minus zero. So it's equal to x, right? So wt uh, for wt that is equals to zero minus vt of x comma zero. So vt of x comma zero, it will be equals to 
vt is actually equals to x and vt of x comma zero will be equals to negative x here uh, sorry x and wt will be equals to negative x okay so now we can uh, say that this problem this static problem is homogeneous uh, uh, sorry, non-homogeneous, but uh, uh, it's not a, ti a time dependent source on the right hand side, right? It's a constant too, so it's not a time dependent source. It's a constant and the con conditions, boundary conditions are homogeneous. So we can split the problem uh, into two more parts, right? So one will be S of X and another will be ZX comma T. So for S of X, we know that S double prime of X is equals to negative T, this is ODE. And then we will construct an, uh, a PD in the form of a Z. So we will solve both the equations and we'll get the final solution, right? So S double prime of X is equal to negative two. We will integrate twice the function. You will get negative X squared plus C1X plus C2. We will apply the boundary conditions. And these are the boundary conditions. S of zero is equals to zero. S prime of one is equals to zero, right? So I apply the conditions, we will get C is equals to, C2 is equals to zero, C1 is equals to positive two, and then we will get S of X is equals to negative X squared plus two X, right? Now we will solve uh, ZTT minus ZX, X is equals to zero. Conditions are Z of zero comma T is equals to zero, Z of X comma, sorry, Z of X uh, one comma T is equals to zero. And then ZX comma zero is equals to, uh this x that is w x comma zero minus s x comma zero here w x comma zero minus s x uh sorry s x not x s x comma zero because that's uh, is a function of x only therefore we get uh, z x comma zero is equals to x squared minus x z t x comma zero will be again z t will be equals to uh w t right so wt is given as uh, negative x therefore at we should write at t is equals to zero right so now it's uh, equals to negative x so we know that the eigen value for this problem will be p is equals to 2n minus 1 pi over 2 and so we can construct the solution z of xt is equals to summation and is equals to 1 to infinity a n sine 2 n minus 1 pi x over 2 cosine 2 n minus 1 pi t over 2 and b n sine 2 n minus 1 pi x over 2 sine 2 n minus 1 pi t over 2. We can use the initial conditions to find a n and b n. We know that we can construct a Fourier series here. A n we can find by using the Fourier series by integrating this function with sine with this eigen function uh, from zero to one. So here is the idea uh, that a n is equals to two times integral of the function into the product of eigen function uh, into dx. Okay, so two times this x squared minus x into sine two n minus one pi x over two dx. Right. And then two times the uh, this integral, the solution of this integral, we have solved this integral here. You can see that uh, the solution for this integral is step by step. So yeah, you can see the solution. And here is the final solution for this integral is eight times negative one to the power n over two n minus one squared minus 16 over two n minus one cube, right? So this is a n and now we have to calculate this is the a n we now want to calculate b n so we want we have to integrate this negative x that is uh, z t x comma zero with the eigen function from zero to one. Uh, therefore, uh, now we are going to integrate from zero to one and we will get the solution for b n by integrating step by step you can see here these are the steps for the integration not much difficult it's easy to integrate uh, we all are familiar with the Fourier series therefore the solution for this integral is this one right so 16 times negative 1 power n plus 1 over 2n minus 1 cubed into pi this is the solution for bn 
therefore wx comma t is equals to negative x squared plus 2x plus summation n is equals to 1 to infinity a n sine 2 n minus 1 pi x over 2 cosine 2 n minus 1 pi t over 2 plus b n sine 2 n minus 1 over 2 pi x sine 2 n minus 1 pi t over 2. We can plug the values of a n and b n to this problem and then we will find the uh, solution uh, for the problem and here and uh, this is uh, uxt is equals to uh, vxt plus wxt right so this is the final answer for this problem so in this manner we can solve these problems uh, the wave equation non-homogeneous wave equation with time dependent boundary conditions all right, and here the uh, conditions are verified. You can verify the conditions ux comma zero is equals to x by applying t is equals to zero in the equation. This will become zero. This one, this one will become, uh, this will be one, this, and this will, this whole will be zero because of this uh, sign two and minus one pi t. And then we know that this was the Fourier series of uh, this negative x squared plus, uh, sorry, series of uh, x squared minus x. Therefore, we will add to the problem and we will get x. Similarly, for the boundary conditions and the initial velocity, we can verify the, the conditions. So that is the solution for this problem. We started the problem by splitting the problem into two parts then we generate the solution for the which uh, that's uh, so satisfies the boundary conditions for vx comma t and then we solve for wx comma t for wx comma t we again split the problem into two parts all right so in this manner you can solve these equations wave equations now in the next uh, class we'll uh, discuss about uh, the time dependent sources with the time dependent boundary conditions so you may go through all these lessons before uh, embarking into the uh, non-homogeneous uh, time dependent source problems so it will be easier for you to tackle with these problems and more advanced problems right so hope you guys understand this uh, session we will come up with some other stuff in the next session so till then goodbye this is the solution for the problem right